The idea of geopolymer use in ancient structures has been a topic of debate among archaeologists and scientists for several years. Some researchers argue that geopolymer technology was used by ancient civilizations to build structures using locally available materials such as volcanic ash, lime, and various aggregates. However, there is still no clear evidence to support this claim, despite the use of high-tech analytical tools in recent years. Let's define our terms. Geopolymers are materials based on binders of alkaline activation, or on the basis of finely dispersed amorphous or crystalline aluminosilicate materials, mixed with solutions of alkalis or salts that have an alkaline reaction usually solutions of hydroxides, silicates, or aluminates of sodium and potassium. A component with binding properties must be present in concrete. By itself, crushed limestone or gypsum does not have astringent properties. To do this, they need to be burned. It was because of the labor-intensive manufacturing process that concrete did not become widespread until the advent of our industrial age. It was easier to cut down a stone block than to grind rock into powder, burn it, and mix it in with mortar. Machines facilitated and accelerated this process, with the result that concrete gradually displaced stone and brick from construction over time. Here we see a flowchart of the various steps that are required. Starting with raw limestone and marl, which is a soil rich in minerals and clay, this material is combined and progressively ground to a fine powder, then prepared to an absolutely dry condition by a heat-driven pre-calcining process. Next, it enters a rotary kiln, which is a long, tilted, rotating tube with a high-temperature environment inside that gradually burns it into cement clinker. After cooling, in a special process that prevents any contamination from moisture, it is stored in silos in preparation for mixing with gypsum and other additives to make cement. The number of tools for such work would be simply fantastic. Hundreds, if not thousands, of hammers, picks, pestles, and everything from expensive bronze and copper, which was very scarce at that time. Egypt during the Old Kingdom could not afford such a consumption of metal when the country actually lived in the Stone Age. It is not clear where the Egyptians got so much firewood for burning limestone or gypsum into lime. Egypt was poor in wood and had barely enough for the needs of metallurgy and ceramics, and without firing, no concrete will work. How about the bags for cement? There were no bag factories. All textiles at the time were produced by women, wives, and slaves. The sacks that they produced were mainly used for storing wheat. So the question arises, where did they get so many bags for the millions of tons of concrete? What were the formworks made of? Wood in ancient Egypt was a scarce imported raw material. There was barely enough for ceiling beams, furniture, weapons, and funerary goods, so they had to import or simply rob neighboring peoples. And here we need tons of wood for formwork. A close inspection of the exposed sides of any blocks or columns said to have been cast from ancient geopolymer exhibit no sign of the impression marks from the formwork such as we see everywhere in modern constructions. Excavations in and around Egyptian monuments have uncovered a wealth of evidence supporting the use of traditional stone cutting techniques. For example, unfinished obelisks still in their origin quarries display clear marks from the tools and methods employed to extract and shape the stones. The Giza Plateau itself features a large limestone quarry where the evidence of removal of very large blocks can still be observed. A trip to the ancient quarries at Tura also reveals traces of large block removal on a massive scale. Proponents of the geopolymer theory claim that the composition of the stones in the pyramids is consistent with a geopolymer mixture. However, extensive petrographic and mineralogical analysis of pyramid samples have consistently shown them to be natural limestone. 
Furthermore, the geological formations in the regions where the stones were quarried exhibit the same compositions, textures, and fossil content as the stones used in the pyramids. This strong correlation supports the theory that the stones were quarried and not artificially produced using geopolymers. The fascination with the idea of geopolymers in ancient Egypt likely stems from the enduring mystery surrounding the construction of these monumental structures. While it is essential to explore new theories and hypotheses, it is equally important to critically evaluate the available evidence. The ingenuity and skill of ancient Egyptians should not be underestimated, as they achieved remarkable architectural feats through traditional means, leaving a legacy that continues to captivate and inspire us to this day.